Treasury yields were also keeping tabs on that this morning, falling after the July jobs report came in weaker than expected, bolstering the case for the Fed to cut rates sooner rather than later. So how should you position yourself as we approach the Fed's easing cycle? Joining us in studio to help answer that question, we've got Kelsey Barrow, who is the Portfolio Manager for Global Fixed Income, Currency, and Commodities over at J.P. Morgan Asset Management. Thanks so much for taking the time here this morning. Absolutely. There's a lot to talk about. There is. All right. So <laughs> let's dive into this because the, we, we ran through some of the hot parts of this jobs report. You're actually zeroed in on one of the weaker spots that kind of jumped out to you. What was that? Yeah, so one of the things that I noticed in, in the internals of the jobs report when you're looking at the sectors is some of the weakness in the higher income uh, categories. So the job losses in the tech sector, uh, in professional business services, uh, you know, the weakness uh, in, in information businesses, all of those types of things. Essentially, we've known for a while that the strength in the payrolls report was coming mostly from two sectors, education, healthcare, and government in state and local. So I I've been more focused on more of the private sector uh, to see if we're starting to see a more material slowdown. Now, you know, the intro, you mentioned the Fed. It, it feels like the Fed was a year ago at this point. But I think the moral of the story is it's really not about the Fed or the central banks. It's about the data. Mm. And the Fed did tell us that they are data dependent, not data point dependent. So as much as I think this report is extremely important, it does solidify the September rate cut, which was our base case. We do also need to be aware that this is just one data point. Mm -hmm. The three month and the six month moving average on job gains are still uh, above 150,000, right? We are still gonna need more information. The market, on the other hand, they're gonna run with this. We've seen a very dramatic move in yields. Our positioning ahead of this number, because we were anticipating the start of the cycle, start of the easing cycle, was to be long duration, was to be in these curve steepener trades. Mm -hmm. A data point like this is going to accelerate that move. Yeah, Kelsey, I'm curious what you make of this dramatic move that we're seeing on the heels at this point. You have this plunge lower uh, almost across the board. We can take a look at the 10-year treasuries down 15 basis points. We're right around 3.8. We see a huge drop in the two-year yield. You also have the dollar moving lower on this. Is To some degree, does this dramatic move, does it make sense? Is it a bit overdone because I think that was also the question going into this print is given some of the rally that we have seen in treasuries over the last several trading days. Right. So we were already fully priced for a rate cut in September before the payrolls report. We were already also priced for probably another one or one and a half rate cuts on top of that by the end of the year. So it's not like the market wasn't expecting an easing cycle before this, but now what the market is, is really questioning is, is that easing cycle need to be faster? So in a soft landing environment, you're thinking about a rate easing cycle that's 25 basis points a quarter. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the pace that people were getting comfortable with. If the labor market is actually weakening more materially, and that's really the circuit breaker. Powell said that in his, in his uh, press conference. Mm -hmm. Then we could be looking at a pace that's more like once a meeting. Mm -hmm. They have eight meetings a year. Mm -hmm. So that is a substantially faster pace of, of rate cuts. Now, we tend to move, we tend to overreact on the day of the print. So I wouldn't necessarily be chasing anything here, but mm -hmm. this is most definitely a notable development for the Fed. And it does solidify that Policy has been restrictive. It's been dragging on the economy slowly. It took a little bit of time for us to see it and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. It's been a year since the Fed moved the Fed funds rate in either mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. It's about time that we probably need to be looking at that adjustment. And so with that in mind, I mean, we're watching a move like we are today because even if we had gotten this perhaps three months ago, this type of reading where it was a miss on all of the major categories, especially kind of on the headline number, unemployment rate, and then additionally on wages as well, markets would have shot higher because it would have said, hey, this means the Fed has to cut earlier, right? Well, now we're in a position where the markets are concerned with the Fed being too late to cut, and we're seeing a reaction like this where bad news is finally becoming bad news. So what is the playbook now for investors who are trying to best position themselves and not, not fight the Fed, but anticipate what they're going to do and how that rate policy will play out. Right, so I, I understand the, the reaction in risk markets and it may be a little bit over, uh, overdue um, because they have been not very sensitive to uh, negative economic data thus far. And so 
there does need to be a recalibration that yes, maybe the growth going forward is not gonna be the growth we saw over the last year, and that's gonna be something that people are gonna need to adapt to. But one thing that does make me a bit more comfortable about the economic environment and the, the environment for risk assets is that the Fed has quite a lot of policy space. So if you think about what the Fed was dealing with when they went into the pandemic, mm -hmm. they could only cut rates 200 basis points and then they hit zero and, and there was nothing really else they, can, they could do. You know, we're at 5% right now. So they actually have a lot of room to adjust to keep this cycle going. So I, again, I'm not sure exactly uh, where we are in terms of how deep this labor market deterioration will be. But what does give me comfort is the fact that the Fed is willing, able, and able to deliver that easing to help the economy, you know, if, if we are turning that way.